sorry, I'm not in, but we're going to try and finish off this tic-tac-toe. So if you go on to the lab, we already did the building a tic-tac-toe board in unit three, lab one. Now we're doing remembering the moves and possible wins. So we're going to have the, the actual board determine who wins. All right, so the first thing they tell you to do is make a global variable called board. That just means this variable can be used for any sprites you make, any clones you make. It's, it's used across the game. Um, they also want you to make a variable called position number. But this is for the clones, which means we're going to allow each clone to have its own position number. So every clone is going to be have a different one. They'll have the same board, but they'll have a different position number. Now, on the lab, it tells you to add the numbers 1 through 9 to the board. I like to do something a little bit different, only I think it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so at the beginning of the game, when the flag is clicked, I'm going to set board to an empty list. And then I'm going to add the word empty to the entire list. Um, you, can, you could make a list with nine things and add and do the word empty. I'm just going to use a for loop. I think it's a little bit. A little bit less typing. So I'm gonna wasn't going in there, sorry. I'm gonna do from one to nine, and then I'm just going to under variables grab an add block. And I'm gonna literally add the word empty to board. Or again, you could just add nine empty spaces and write the word empty nine times. So if you click it, you get your your board here. I just think it's easier to check for a tie with them all being consistently the same thing, but um, it's not the only way to do it, clearly, because it's not the way they want you to do it. Um, all right, and then we're also going to set position number to the number one. And the reason it's one and not zero is because for this AP exam, the first thing in a list or in a string, like any indexing starts at one. So our first guy right here, this first um, clone is going to have position number one. This one will be two, this one will be three, which means we have to figure out where and when we should change it. So if you go in your make board, this is where our clones are made. Since we already set it to one, that means the first one I want to keep is one. So I don't want to change it until after I create it. So I'm going to change the position number by one, which means every position number will now go up by one when the new clone is made. So at the end, the last number will end up being 10, but there's no clone that'll have the number 10. It'll just add one after the last clone is made. And then the goal is when I click this X, I want the board to create or to be added the letter X. So if you look here, we can either add, delete, insert, or replace. Adding literally adds it to the end of the list. So I don't want to do that. Inserting keeps everything, just inserts it between two of the objects. So we don't want to do that. We want to replace it. So when I click this and I turn my costume to X, I want to replace a certain item of my board with the letter X. And hopefully you're thinking, oh, it's the position number I want to change. Because remember, if this is position number one, I want to change board one, or the index at one in the board. Same thing if I click now an O here, this is position number five. So I would want five to be replaced with an O. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. Doesn't matter where in here it goes, but um, make sure you change the X to an O. All right, so I'm gonna reset it, make sure it does what I'm hoping it'll do. And they are changing. All right, so that's Parts uh, one, two, and three. Well, I didn't resave it, but one, two, and three. Um, 
five. We did that. Six. Make sure it updates. Yes. Seven. How many wins are possible? And we're going to make a list of all the possible ways you could win. Meaning, like if these were all X's going across, that would be a possible win. Or if these were all O's going down, that would be a possible win. So if you think about it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways you could win. So we are going to make a list of all the ways you could win, and we're actually going to place it in a block, in a reporter block, called um, Possible Winning Triples. Oops. And it's going to be a list and a list. So I'm going to first drag in a list and I'm going to put eight empty boxes for those eight possible wins. And then I'm going to put a list of three. I'm going to duplicate that and place it in all of these. Because these are going to be like one, two, three. That's the way you could win. And then the next one will be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to add these in. Sorry. Screwed that one up. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then going down would be one, four, seven, two, five, eight. Three, six, nine. And then one, five, nine, oops. And then three, five, seven. All right, so those are all the ways you could win. Next page. We're gonna build this expression, and this is basically going to show you what's in these positions in the board. So make sure you have some things in the board so that you can see it. So you grab the map block, you grab item block, you take this out, just delete it. For board of item one, two, three. And if you look at what's in my item one, two, three, I should get XOX. which I do. So we're going to create a block called status of triple. So that is going to allow us to put in any triple and see what the status is. Triple being a list, so you're going to change it so the input is a list. And I'm going to drag this in here. Take that list out and put that one in because I want to be able to add in any list. And then, that's down here. Oh, I have duplicates, sorry. I need them a couple times. Um, and then, I'm kind of going to skip over those right there. We're going to create a status of all winning triples. So basically, I want to map over my entire list of triples. I want to map over all the possible winning triples. And I want to see what the status is. So make a block called status of all winning triples. And I want to map status of the triple over possible winning triples. So basically it's going to take each 
triple here, place it in here, and it's going to show me the status of them all. This is my other one, so they should show me the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it has a two there because I made another one earlier. All right, so these this is my status. So if you're wondering, well, how am I going to know who wins? Well, if all of these going across, so the game, like pretend you don't have this board in front of you and you only have this block telling you, you would know who won who wins by looking to see if there's any X's or O's going across. So we're going to make a block called one. It's going to be a, re um, a predicate block that's going to tell us true or false whether there's either all X's or all O's going across. So make a block. It's operator predicate. I'm going to write one. They have a question mark. Oops. And we're going to take in a letter. So that letter is either going to be an X or an O. And basically, we want to know, does the status of all winning triples contain, this is really abstract here, but does it contain a list of this letter that I'm looking for? So basically, does it have all XXX or all OOO? And right now, if I plug in a letter, like let's say I plug in the letter X, it should say false. But if I reset my game and I have X win, it says true now because this list, the status of all winning triples, contains X's going across. So now, how am I going to get it so that when I'm playing the game, it will stop the game once I win. So we're going to need a few if statements. So I want my first if statement to be if x1, I want to say that x1, and I want to stop everything. Otherwise, it'll keep letting you play. And then it might say O wins like in the same game. So we want to make sure we stop everything. Then I'm going to duplicate it for my O. Let's check it out. See if X wins. All right, X won. Let's try if O wins. Oh, I forgot to change the, sorry. Let's try it again. All right, O1. Now, problem we don't have right now is my tie. Doesn't tell me a tie. So, you have to think about how would it know that there's a tie right now? Hopefully you're thinking, well, it'll know because X didn't win and O didn't win, but there also has to be one other condition. Because the whole game, you know, when you start the game, X didn't win here and O didn't win. So you don't want it to constantly be saying tie, tie, tie. The only way you know there's a tie is when X didn't win, O didn't win, and this board no longer contains the word empty. So we're going to have one more if statement with a bunch of with a couple and. And we're a couple knots. And we'll say that I'll duplicate that. X didn't win. O didn't win. And the board does not contain the word empty. Oops, spelled that wrong. Let's try, and we'll just say tie. Good. 
and then I would I would throw in a stop ball. And I'm thinking that's it. Um, that they do it differently there. That's it. Um, so make sure you save your game, share it, submit it. Uh, if you have any issues, let me know.